Welcome to our 18th prayer call. Uh, it just seems amazing that we're already at number 18, but I think um, since we began December the 1st, we've really been able to see the Lord move uh, across our country with Ted and Heidi with the election and uh, lots of surprises, especially this week, I know. Um, usually I don't really speak about personal things, but last night I woke up after an incredibly vivid dream. I was putting together one of the emails that you receive on Mondays, and in my dream um, there was a verse that I was copying and pasting onto the email, and it went something like this, I am in you, and you are in me, and in love you stand in Christ. And then the address in my dream for that verse was in Nehemiah, Well, when I woke up this morning, I knew not to go to Nehemiah to find that particular verse. But I did spend some time looking for one that that would also be a comfort, because that was a comfort to me last night. And I found one, um, Nehemiah 1.11, and it says, Lord, let your ear be attentive to prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. And I took some time to see what uh, Ray Steadman says about this particular verse. And I thought it really pertains to what we've been doing over these 18 weeks together. Number one, what Nehemiah did, and I believe what we do also, is we demonstrate concern for our nation. That was certainly a gathering point for each of us. We confessed. Our sins, our country's sins, and we've committed ourselves to action and we've asked God to also act in our behalf. And here is the the fourth thing that Ray Sedman said. It's because we must face factors over which we have no control. God must arrange these factors in order to succeed. I believe that we have been able to together uh, do each of these things and Our prayer uh, is that we remain steadfast, that we persevere, that we don't grow weary, and we don't cease. Uh, And hopefully we'll be doing that through November. I want to just remind you of our mission statement because it really does set the groundwork of why we're getting together. It says, We of of Christ dedicated to a focused season of prayer on behalf of our nation, presidential candidate Ted Cruz, his family, and staff. We believe God is able to do far more abundantly beyond all we ask or think according to the power that works within us from Ephesians. And from Daniel, it's together we stand firm in one spirit, lifting our prayers to the one who changes the times and the epochs. He removes kings and he establishes kings. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. And we've seen our mission um, statement happen throughout these weeks together. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, the very reason that we can trust our nation in this presidential election, Ted and Heidi Cruz, to you is because of your covenant promise. You are indeed in each of us, and we, your body, are in you. And in love, we stand together in Christ. You are our God, and we are your people. Enable us to persevere in prayer, our commitment to action. That is our commitment, is this prayer and this prayer team, Lord, that I believe that you have ordained. And Father, for these on the front lines, our prayer focus this week is for campaign staff. We lift them up. And Father, for the godly faith leaders like Pastor Mark Warren and Canon Mark Pearson who lead us today, Lord, give them all they need to faithfully follow your lead. And Lord, anoint these two men as they pray, Lord, today, to touch your throne, Father, and encourage those of us on this call. Thank you for giving Ted and Heidi the grace to find refuge in you, and especially during these recent storms, storm after storm, they have come to you, Father, and you've given them enabling grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, first of all, uh, prayer team, I want to introduce to you Pastor Mark Warren. 
By the way, both of our uh, prayer leaders today are from, from New Hampshire. Um, Mark Warren is the lead pastor of Grace Capital. It's a multi-site church with four locations in New Hampshire. Mark's ministry experience has ranged from being a youth pastor, worship leader, and a campus pastor. He also has a diverse background as founder of Global Benefit. It's a global nonprofit that helps people out of extreme poverty. And he's also spent 10 years in the business sector. His first profound Holy Spirit experience was in his living room when he was 23 years old. And he says he's been on a wild journey ever since. Uh, Pastor Mark has been married to his wife, uh, Audra, for 23 years, and they have three awesome kids, Ethan, Abby, and Ella, and Elliot. So, um, Pastor Mark, welcome. We're so glad you're here with us. Thank you so much. Great to be here with you. Oh, and go ahead and begin. Okay. Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to... Um, to pray for our campaign staff, Father. But before I begin, I do want to lift up um, uh, Ted and Heidi to you and their girls, Lord. I just want to pray continued protection over them, um, Lord, and just continue to give them the covering and grace that they need to continue to walk forward with courage and a steadfastness, Father, to the things that you've called them to. I thank you for their willingness to serve our nation in this way. But I'm sure it's very difficult in the process. But as I turn... Lord, our attention to our campaign staff, Father, I do want to say um, give uh, the campaign campaign staff just also just clarity of mind to know the right emails to send out to the people to connect with the donors. Father, that you would um, give them um, just strength and clarity as they begin to continue to strategize, to know the ways to make the right connections with the right people. Father, I also pray that... um, as they raise the needed funds, Lord Jesus, that they would just um, do it in a way that's honoring to you, that they're not pulling out any uh, anything that is not honoring to you, Lord, and just be straightforward in their communication. Father, I would just pray that you would just find those uh, campaign workers who are working right alongside with uh, Ted and Heidi, Father, the closest ones, that they would be so attentive to their needs that uh, Ted or Heidi would not have to ask um, their staff to to know what it what they need to do, but Lord, the staff would just be so attentive, and it'd be so refreshing to Ted and Heidi over the next weeks. Father, it's like man, the staff is just coming around us and just loving on us and supporting us and knowing our needs and knowing how to support um, those needs. Father, for those who are again just writing those emails, I, I just pray that that the um, that their words would be so clear that the words um, on the on the emails or the pages or on the media or the advertising, Father, is is such a way that captivates the hearts, Father, to you, captivates the hearts to this nation that needs to be great once again, captivates the hearts to to just bring uh, clarity amongst all of the all of the noise that's out there, all of the lies, all of the the uh, media blitzes that want to tear down and break down. Father, we know that you build up and you don't tear down. So, Father, I pray that that this campaign and this staff would be part of the building process, not the tearing down process. So, God, I just thank you for the opportunity to lift up um, our campaign staff and lift up Ted and Heidi and their family to you, Lord, this morning. And, Lord, I just thank you for the privilege to be used by this way to to support um, somebody who's giving their life to to making this country great, who's giving their life to lead us well. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Pastor Mark, thank you so much for for lifting up, uh, especially our staff. Um, I have an opportunity to get to know a number of them, and they are so faithful. And um, they're asking for prayers, and they need them. And I don't know of any other campaign where staff are so lifted up because they are such a foundation to the whole campaign. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, now I want to introduce to you uh, Canon Mark Pearson, uh, also from New Hampshire. Um, Canon Pearson, uh, with his wife, uh, a doctor, Mary uh, Pearson, they have co-founded New Creation Healing Center. Uh, this brings together a family practice medicine, Christian counseling, 
massage and prayer ministry, the whole team for the whole person, for the wholeness in Christ. And the center is based in Kingston, New Hampshire. It's about 60 miles from Boston. And I spoke with um, uh, Ken and Pearson this morning and uh, understand that they are now looking for another family physician to join them in New Hampshire. And he says that uh, this particular area is like a mission field. He said there are more Christians in Africa than there are in Kingston, New Hampshire. So if any of you know of someone or have any interest, if you could contact me and I'll make sure the two of you get in touch. Um, Kenan Pearson is an author of several books, a regular writer for Charisma Magazine. Um, and as far as his support for Ted Cruz, he's served as a town chairman uh, in New Hampshire and um, has represented Ted as a surrogate speak- speaker also in New Hampshire. And currently he is running for the New Hampshire House of Representatives as a pro-life conservative. He calls himself a Ted Cruz Republican. Uh, I thought you also might find it interesting that he is a classically trained church pianist, or organist, rather. So thank you so much, uh, Canon Pearson. Thank you for having me. Let's uh, unite in prayer, first of all, for the world. The great church father, Tertullian, said that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And we're seeing a lot of blood of the Christian martyrs, especially in Muslim places. But that is a seed that goes into the ground, Father, and we pray that out of the ground would come up many, many more believers, as we've seen in China for the last half century. And we know that there are many souls on the Damascus Road amongst the persecutors of Jesus' followers. We also know that there are many Muslims around the world that are so tired of what's going on. They're coming to Jesus, sometimes in their dreams. So we pray, O Lord, that you would give strength to those who this day may have to testify for Jesus to the shedding of their blood, and that from this the church would flourish, and from this persecutors would come to saving knowledge of Jesus. And for us, whose persecution may be more subtle and therefore even worse, the little persecutions of the day give us grace to be inspired by the blood of the martyrs, O Lord, that we would stand firm for you in our witness day by day. We pray for our nation, O Lord, in this terrible, troubling times. But in such times as this, you've raised up a Jonathan Edwards or a Billy Sunday or a Billy Graham. In times of chaos, Lord, raise up many to speak and speak well for you, that people in chaos would discover that their only rest is as their restless hearts find their rest in you, O Lord. We lift up Ted. O oh Lord, not by power or might, but by the Spirit, give him a refreshment, give him your grace, that what he does would not just be his hard work for you, but would be you working through him for your honor and glory. We do pray for Ted's family, for Heidi, for the scurrilous things that are being said about her, that the daughters here. We pray, O oh Lord, help them not to become cynical and not to become defeated, but to sense your victory, your standing right alongside them, O oh Lord. We also pray for those who are Ted supporters, who see in Ted's policies, plans, visions for America good things, but don't share the power of faith in Jesus. And we first of all pray, O oh Lord, that never, ever, ever would their support cause Ted to waver in his personal walk with you and in his public work for you. But we also pray that the witness of many solid Christian believers who are in this campaign would be a witness to those who signed on for something lesser. Oh Lord, may these be converting moments, not just for sound government, but for eternal salvation. We also pray for the Christian voters around our country, O oh Lord, many of whom are angry, many of whom feel betrayed by the Republican Party, but in that anger they do not see 
that character and integrity matter a great deal. It's not just the person that feeds into their anger. Oh, Lord, it is the one that feeds into their better nature. We pray in the upcoming primaries, Lord, that those who name the name of Christ would not stand with those who use language that does not glorify your name. We pray that there would be a movement away from such and towards those who lift you up. We also pray, Lord, for those running for other offices. I know that in New Hampshire, we had many bills before the general court that were defeated by a handful of votes having to do with life in the womb. And I pray for myself and I pray for other pro-life people who are running for state office in New Hampshire and around the country, O oh Lord, that you would give us favor, that we would stand for you and for your truth in season, out of season. Give us to remember how William Wilberforce was the only member of parliament that stood in opposition to the slave trade until he was privileged to see the victory. Give us, O oh Lord, never to give in. May we see the victory. We pray for the courts in our country who have arrogated to themselves the right to be legislators. We pray, O oh Lord, that until this stops, you would help them to legislate for life, for morality, for truth, for decency. And we especially pray for the Supreme Court that's down one key person right now. And thank you for his life and witness and that he is seeing you presently face to face in glory. But we do pray, O oh Lord, that subsequent people appointed to the court would vote on the side of the angels. And then finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves that we would know what to do. May we never be weary in well-doing or slack in prayer. May we, O oh Lord, call people around the country. May we, O oh Lord, find out even in our states that have already had our primaries how we can sign up to make phone calls, how we can do this or that. O oh Lord, may we not slacken in doing well. Finally, Lord, may all of this be done to your glory, not to ours and not to any other human being. May this be done, O oh Lord, by your grace and not just by our own working hard. And Lord, in this season, as we celebrate that Jesus literally, actually, truly, physically rose from the dead, may we see that you are the God of pulling off the greatest miracle ever, and therefore the rest of it isn't too difficult for you. So may we, O oh Lord, discern our part so that having been blessed, we in turn would be and take your blessing to others. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name we do pray. And um, I can just tell you that you um, have blessed us and blessed the Lord. And uh, Ken and Pearson, your prayer has certainly glorified him. And I believe uh, you spoke about um, some of the early um, people who've um, raised consciousness in America. And I think that God has raised up a lot of Mark Warrens and Canon Pearsons in our country, and we are grateful. Uh, so thank you, uh, the both of you, and for the rest of you on the prayer call. Uh, we look forward to next Tuesday, and I again thank you for your faithfulness, not only in reading the emails and praying for the prayer focus of the week, but just joining us on this prayer call. Uh, next week, you're going to hear from Brian English and Buddy Pilgrim. Uh, both of these men yeah. serve on the Faith and Religious Liberties leadership team of the campaign. So you'll probably get some inside information that will be of interest to you, but also I think you'll be encouraged by just seeing the caliber of godly men who work within the campaign. So we'll see you next Tuesday. I believe that's April the 5th. Thank you for being with us, everyone.